Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Riley. Cheers. And another guy named Steve. The other guy. <laughs> the other Steve. And my two Steve. bitches. <laughs> oh! 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 I was worried. I was. I was wondering. You know the Pirate Steve's <laughs> the man. Pamela and Christy. Call the ambulance now. John. <laughs> and Pastor Mike. Yo! Uh, I think we'll start off with Riley's Beer Corner. So today I'm drinking uh, once again uh, Sour Port from Valley Center Brewery. It's uh, just as good as it was last time. And uh, yeah, still really sour. And uh, I think it's like 4.7, 4.6. So it's not too heavy, but not all too light. So it's, it's a good middle. And uh, yeah, it's a solid beer. Cool. Solid sour. Is it... Is it made with GMO ingredients? It better not though? be, otherwise I won't be buying it probably anymore. Is. But, I mean, who knows? I, I mean, this stuff's pretty hard because you can't know it's on the label, right? It's on the label, so it's pretty tough to, well, just to know. So do you think the government should be regulating that shit? What, like labeling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think you buy companies organic. should be voluntarily wanting to say if their product is... If GMO is such a great product, then, you know, why don't you slap it on your label so everyone can know that they're partaking in the excellency of, uh, you know, science at its greatest, or, you know, it's in its uh, stage of development of uh, being able to provide such a great product. And uh, if you well, think GMOs aren't great, then you would label, want to label that, you know, non-GMO. So yep. I think it comes down to, you know, um, consumer... Uh, I agree with that. The only thing is we have organic, and so if you really want to make sure, you just buy organic. Well, organic doesn't necessarily mean non-GMO. Yes, exactly. Yes, 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 I've does. heard That's two right. different things yeah. about that, that it does that and does that it not doesn't. Necessarily mean I thought Technically, you can put it organic on everything because it's not regulated by the government either, and so you can no, put it on... Well, no, you do have US, you, you yeah. USDA yeah. organic. Yeah. You, you do have you, you, right? you, the USDA well, does certify organic, and then you have the you have other agencies that also do... Organic certification. For instance, here in California, you get the CCCOF. I think it is a California something organic growers, whatever certification. Uh, so it, the government does actually put their USDA. The USDA does certify organic produce if a farmer requests. It. But pay, does but, but it. does it have within their criteria? Is it non-GMO? Okay, so I, I um, think current, I thought recently, it was. Uh, last I think year or two. Uh, it was released by Whole Foods that they can no longer guarantee that their products do not contain GMO because of everything that's happened. It's been cross-breeding. Cr- cross-breeding. Right, you know and cross-breeding. Yeah. And right. it just, it's right. impossible for them to guarantee it. So right. I would say probably not with organic. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know for a fact, but I would I used say to know the they, answer to that, and it, it, I want to believe that it used to meant that it wasn't, but that it... Yeah. We can get it to the I, I heard yeah. that... Orig- like, I heard that it doesn't mean that it's not GMO free, so there could be GMOs in organic food. And then, like Chelsea was like, "No, it can't be real." And we looked it up, and it was like USDA organic certified means that it's GMO free. That's what I thought. And too. so I was like, "Okay, yeah. that's that's yeah, kind of cool." I but I think it's the but agenda of those growing or uh, GMO crops that they'll be able to at least down the road slip their product under officially sure. under the organic label. Yeah, yeah, sure, like a backdoor entry, sure. And then like what you're getting at, like it's just. The GMO uh, organisms, you know, genetically modified organisms, so are invasive to all kinds of crops that, you know, you try a, a farmer tries his very best. And the effed up thing is too is that it's not the the independent non-GMO farmer's responsibility to keep, you know, or it is his responsibility to keep it out. It's not the uh, you know like Monsanto's know, uh, it's not, responsibility yeah. to keep well, their Monsanto stuff out will of sue other the other people right, that they're taking the, their ge- genetically modified seed. Like, yeah, because it's all they, patented. They lost that court case. Did by they the really? Way. Yeah, they lost that. If Which one? Because they've yeah, there's know. been tons of them. There's several. Yeah, there's yeah. been several that they've okay, won. Okay, well then, yeah, yeah. No, I just remember the one who was about the one farmer who sued him for like ruining his crop, and he ended up winning that. Oh, one. that's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. I know that there were some, I, and I even watched a documentary on it, and there were some farmers that uh, had lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they heard lost. Heard the, they basically yeah. lost the farm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because, and it was it was Monsanto. That was suing them. Yeah. For for their their seed. Trespassing yeah. onto their property. Yes. <laughs> in the case of alfalfa, I remember uh, 
expect basically that they didn't ex like it's just a matter of time and there won't be any heirloom alfalfa mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. it'll all be you know yeah. well look at corn man i mean corn's yeah the corn diversity yeah. of you know um, uh, mexico and it's just like you know from what i understand there's still like a region that's like holding on strong but it's a struggle like it's just so invasive there's like i forget how many like dozens or hundreds of different kinds of coins there are in mexico and all of that, you know, stand to, to be eradicated by, you know, the patented gene of Monsanto's mm. nasty corn. <laughs> there used to be, like, yeah, about uh, somewhere around 200 different varieties of corn in the United States, and now there's, like, 15. Yeah. It's just wiped out because of that. So you know? the same thing has happened with wheat as well as soybean. And um, supposedly, according to some studies done, uh, we'll use the soybean as an example. I'm not sure the exact number it was either some 98 or 100 so different types of varieties of soybean and uh, it once was considered a very good thing for nutrition mm -hmm. but due to hybridization and that is a form of genetically modifying uh, hybridization is taking the best of the best right. so now there's only a small handful of variations of seed mm -hmm. and so uh, and I was discussing this with Riley last week, and so my what I believe may be have, have be, may be occurring is the reason why people are not able to uh, absorb these nutrients in the soybean because the soybean once had a plethora of nutrients uh -huh. is because in such a short time span we've been able to hybridize it, and the same thing has happened with wheat. People have all kinds of weed allergies. And it's allergies just too fast, and, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's, 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 it's more to, natural, it, but it, it's it, just too it, fast. It's just because of technology right. and farming right. technology, it's happened so fast yeah. that our bodies haven't caught up with, right. uh, adapted to being able to absorb it. And so soybean <coughs> can cause phytoestrogen, which leads to breast cancers, uh, estrogens in males, and that's not good for mm -hmm. the male. Mm -hmm. I read about 80% of the food that we consume is... Yeah. GMO. I heard that. I think I heard like 70 to 80. Yeah. yeah. It's kind yeah. of unknown. Well, then it's shouldn't we be dead? In, in, like, if they're so bad? Well, the thing is, I mean, how long have they been in, like, into the public? I think it's only been since, like, what, 85? 96. Like, kind of 96. Okay, right. so, I mean, that's only, what, like, going on Not too 20 long. years? So, but the fact that, and it's... it's 10 years, it's, it's, Sure, I mean, because who knows? It could have been, you know, 40% 10 years ago or whatever. So, and then... So, I mean, it's hard to trace it, you know, it's hard to, to track it. But look at, you know, the, the skyrocketing of uh, all kinds of all kinds of, all kinds of illnesses, yeah, autism you know, and and autism, yeah. you yeah. got uh, cancer, yeah. you got, uh, you know, allergies that are like gnarly crazy. Mm -hmm. and Digestive problems. Animal sterility, yeah, I mean, all yeah, kinds animal. of problems. Really? Yeah, animal as, problems. Oh, as far as I know, bees. there's no studies linking GMO to those actually those things though. There's enough solid research at the moment. Actually, there's more. There's more actually. <laughs> so uh, there's the French study, right? That was that done. French study was pulled though. It was for t they did it for two years and they did it covertly. Uh, they had to. They had. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean? Pulled? It was originally uh, uh, put in for publication, uh, but was pulled by the researchers and published in a. Non peer reviewed. I wonder why. Source. Well, they now I, I remember. Uh, it also, the the brief time that it was, it was under peer review, received uh, a lot of pushback by the scientific community over their methodology. Well, they use small small uh, sources, uh, um, uh, small sample groups. All right, so that kind of thing. the study did find, and so also a thing that we should add is they, the scientists and researchers uh, made note in the article that they had to uh, do all of their emails encrypted because they were in fear of their lives um, during this study. Uh, they didn't want anything, any repercussions to come back from their findings, and they, were, they found, they show, they, you see the pictures of the rats, um, you know, using rats as usual scientific uh, uh, studies. Uh, they found that the rats had all kinds of cancers. I mean, these things couldn't walk. They had these tumors. They were just, you know, they look pretty sick. And that's that's just the rats. And I don't know how many generations they did it over. I'm not really sure, but two years, rats growing exponentially. Should be five or six. I'd say the big money is behind saying 
GMOs are good, right? I mean, that's where... Well, they produce crops the more uh, efficiently, um, shorter periods of time. But we as consumers need to stop consuming and wasting so much where we could grow organically non-GMO and keep the rate of natural growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definitely something that yeah, needs to be looked at. Seriously. We I waste mean, so much. No, it's so true. Yes. And yes. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need a lot of space to grow a lot of really good food. Yeah. Uh, -GMO. I think from a health perspective, I, um, the biggest concern for me is, number one, uh, being so divorced from the food source. Uh, we we don't understand that these are still living creatures, and we should still respect that Concur. Yeah. they've mm -hmm. given their life, even if they're plants. Watch the animal rights um, video <laughs> on that one. <laughs> you know something John mentioned today is very interesting. You were telling me about a woman that had taken... <laughs> <laughs> it's all the black widows. We're just we're all on edge. <laughs> you just don't know. Fodder for the clip show. Oh, I, guess I thought I burned them all. But... Black widow. No. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you share that with the group? What you learned? The woman that did, took the bee pollen and water. Oh for yeah, there was a woman who did six, six months of bee pollen and water, and she was having her blood samples monitored by a doctor the entire time, and uh, basically. Yeah, they were. Her blood samples showed were exactly where they should be, and all she had was bee pollen and water. Hmm. But what mm -hmm. I thought about that is because of GMO going on, genetically modifying organisms, the plant life, it's causing bees to start dying off. Right. And that's something. I mean, John, there is you there is a, like, be sustainable in a healthy mm -hmm. way. There's a lot of things being pollen. blamed on the bee die off, but I one of the ones fun. that's kind of sticking around is that uh, most of the bee die offs are around corn, and of course, oh, corn, is it really? Is that where it is? Okay. And of course, corn is. GMO, what about right? chemtrails? That's another show entirely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. You know, the bees dying off is. A uh, I mean, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard that story. Yeah. That's yeah. a. Yeah. It's a hypothesis. Yeah. 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 Well, the yeah. other the other problem oh, with GMOs is that they. Uh, when well the Monsanto ones specifically the how they change them for I'm sorry for to be resistant to herbicides and to uh, to fight the uh, as uh, insecticides uh, but the problem is is that then you have these super bugs and super weeds that yes. develop from that which causes the use of more herbicides and pesticides. Or to be stronger, right? And so stronger. There was, there was the cotton, it was the BT would, would, cotton, right? Right. And then there was the cotton worm, and then now there's a super worm, and then super there was worm. Roundup had a weed killer for weeds, and now there's super weeds. Would we even be going down this road? We, yeah, that word, though. But, uh, <laughs> would we even be going down this road if they couldn't patent it? If there was That's a good point right? too. Really? Yeah. If there was, yeah. simply was definitely an IP yeah. issue wow. here. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know the one thing that I know though is I saw the new Jurassic Park movie, and <laughs> apparently if you genetically modify a dinosaur, uh, Monsanto source, you know, is at least the way I, I, that's what I'm calling it, Monsanto source. You genetically modify a dinosaur, apparently it can really cause some problems. So if we're talking about like art imitating life, I think. I think the people involved in making that movie were trying to say something there for sure. I don't think that was just like, or like, oh, yeah, let's just throw in this thing about genetically modified dinosaur. I think that was, that was kind of like a little bit of subtlety there, I, at least from so, the, the creators or the writers of the movie, for sure, I think. Now, does that, anyone... Is Monsanto is playing God? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone know um, of a scenario where GMO foods have helped, I don't know, a starving nation or something like that? See, well, there's, hear, the gold the rice. Yeah, there's the Gold Rice. There's a Gold Rice project. I heard that doesn't work. I heard, yeah, I heard, I heard it's it not, but they yeah. do have. Yeah. They, yeah. they, <laughs> they, they do have. They do. They did develop a new form of rice. It just came out recently, that does, uh, does work. It. See, the problem with the yellow rice was that, it was more nutritious, but it was lower yield, but now they have this one that's uh, with the high nutritious and with higher yields. Well, that's nice. And they think that uh, with further studies, they can improve that. The problem is, I mean, I don't know. I mean, people say like, oh, Monsanto, like it can feed the world. Like, don't you want to feed the world? It's like, well, yeah, I want the world to be fed, whatever with that, you know, you're getting at that. But like, I mean, we have enough 
we have enough food. You know, mm -hmm. humanity has enough food to feed everybody on the planet. It's not right really now, a matter of, yeah. you know, being able to <coughs> grow enough food. It's a matter of being able to get that food to the people who need it. Distribution. Uh, so, yeah, it's the distribution of food. That's the problem. Education. So, education, education is the problem. It's huge, not, you know, yeah. oh, that's what the yeah. problem is. We need yeah. to punch a hole into these organisms with some gold and some viruses and some bacteria and make them be able to do things that they couldn't do before. And because the, the whole problem there is that, like, you know, it's been touched on here, it, it creates a whole, like, what are the environmental, just the environmental, like, forget the human health uh -huh. factor, which is considerable when you're talking about, you know, what kind of impact these have, but what about the environmental? I think that's going to take a longer term uh, of, you know, basically ongoing experimentation with the uh, living environment to really get a handle on what kind of repercussions it's going to have, and I just think <coughs> it's incredibly dangerous and short-sighted and you know you know you can tout about you know oh feeding the hungry but like <laughs> i just think it's a backwards way of going about it uh yeah and is it yeah. is it is it working is it feeding the hungry now yes and, so uh, there's, a, there's a tribe of starving they're, they're almost dying star starving shareholder millionaires that were <laughs> 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 I was wondering where he's going with that. These, these guys with penthouse apartments were just you know, are these really hard up for good food. Yeah, I hope they heard they that. The roundup, the, 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 the roundup versions are like they, they, they certainly deserve most of the the ire, but it's we can see how the pest that they're supposed that the roundup versions are supposed to to be resistant to are adaptive, you know, just like the germs and we're using sanitizers and germs are getting more resistant to the san you know, the sanitizers, right? So same thing with the pests. And so now uh, all Monsanto or whomever has to do is tweak the code a little bit and sell a new product. And the farmers are completely dependent on this cycle of adjusting the patented seed. Where's the know? end game in that that's scenario? That's exactly yeah, it, right? The degradation yeah, that's, of the environment and the loss of life. And that's just <laughs> it. Like, uh, the time-tested methods that predate, you know, uh, this commercial agriculture that we went to in the, the 30s and 40s uh, proved to be, pr could feed the world, right? We, the old way before that. I mean, it, or you could even look at another way is that the greenhouse production with microgreens, you're talking about an extremely short crop rotation, eight to 12 days, and uh, the product is more like per serving, it's more nutrient dense than uh, eating romaine lettuce, organic romaine lettuce, the microgreens are more nutritious. So that and uh, rabbits, you know, have a very fast reproductive rate. So there's like plenty of uh, <coughs> solutions to feed the, the poor without think, having to go down this, this path. I think there's a big dark, issue unknown. with that, with yeah. where it comes to, you know, governments too. It's not that these people are starving to death because there's no food. Yeah. It's because... The brown country they're, are getting raked by the first world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something I read, though, they said the next generation of GMOs is nanotechnology, and I wanted to know if you knew anything about that. <laughs> it's like bad on bad. <laughs> it's, it's changing the atomic structure of things. For example, one thing that I read, they talked about... That's not genetically modified, yeah. though. Well, no, but it's the next generation, too. So they create tableware. It's silver, and it has this layer, bacterial resistant layer on there. Silver, well, silver does, does yes. have that normally. So, well, I mean, it was extensive. I can't go okay. about it. But was it was nanotechnology on this? Yeah, on nanotechnology. I've heard Something of that. Something I want to read more into. I've heard so of that. I just um, thought maybe you might know some more about it, really. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I just, it was the same thing. I don't really know much about it. I read it quick. It was something that they were Changing trying to create or stuff. invent, and they were tr creating antibacterial surfaces on, on, on things, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Well, silver, and that, that, I, yeah, that I don't have a, Salts to like a particular problem with it from what no, I've heard yeah. so far, but you know, we're not necessarily ingesting it, and, and silver is a natural. One thing I wanted to touch on was like, the people, you know, because you hear like it claimed by people who are supporters of GMOs, like, oh, there isn't one valid scientific study that would indicate that GMOs are harmful to the human health. But like, what was it that uh, someone said maybe the other day in this group here um, that like 
90 or some odd percent of the research was done by like five companies. Mm. They're all are, oh, yeah. they're like all like subsidiary or directly related to Monsanto. So it's like the people who are in charge of telling us of whether or not the you know, okay product is harmful or the people producing it. it. Yeah. So and, I mean, <laughs> and I can't help but to think that this is always somehow tied into WHO and the United Nations and and yeah. personally, I don't think there's I don't understand how anyone could even rem remotely trust the United Nations. I mean, this this podcast appeals to anarchists, so there's already some some uh, the, the 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 population this is reaching is already appropriately primed to distrust you the UN but I'm I mean even some of your dyed in the wool Democrats and I don't understand how they can even trust the, sucker born every the United minute. Nations anymore man well yeah. I, I always sucker born every minute. think about how they you know they you know people talk about well or at least I don't I hate using people like that because it's just it's so vague but a lot of people will say that you know well they think you know everything the FDA does is makes it safe you know that you know talk about talk about an agency that. yeah. that's just a big bunch of jokers i mean they uh uh here's a really good example this is one of the, like this is one of those like older reasons why people really really don't like monsanto is um uh, so they you know the company monsanto commissioned a study about i can't remember what seed or crop it was exactly it was most likely corn but you know so they commissioned a study on it you know with their scientists you know and of course surprise surprise it comes out hey this shit's totally okay for you their own scientists you know peer reviewed by all the same people working for them it gets sent to the fda for approval like hey this shit's safe right the the head of the fda uh retired or something i don't think he resigned i think he retired so check this out. The woman who became the new head of the FDA worked for Monsanto. Yeah. Wait for it, Topper. She worked on that study. <laughs> so it, so when that guy oh, retires, yeah. on her desk when she gets there is, oh, this is that study I worked in. Approved. Yeah, Stamp. No. You know, like that's kind of that's gonna yeah. be my next the rotational point. door, the, yeah. the rotating door of regulators. Yeah, yeah. Monsanto. Like, yeah. The people in charge of the FDA and the yeah. they're all, all embedded, those different yeah. Yeah, they're all the USDA yeah. is Tom Bilsack, if I remember right. He's a former Monsanto lobbyist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's just it just becomes rather apparent that, you know, there's a monetary and control factor that's really at hand with the GMOs. To me it just seems pretty apparent. And like you were getting at John like how a lot of like, you know, the um, the approval of it being like all safe for humanity and what have you is coming from like the WHO, the UN, and stuff like this. And for me, like that's problematic because in I think the 70s or the 80s, I forget the year, but there was a, a scientific study done by the IUCN, uh, International Union for the Conservation of Nature, which is a scientific board uh, investigation for the UN uh, at the bequest of the UN to determine what the sustainable life on planet Earth for human population could be. And they came out with two numbers uh, from their studies that if we wanted to maintain seven to nine billion people, the majority of people would have to live either out of volitional will or through government mandate as poor agrarian peasants. Jeez. So if you know that's true, that would be my vote compared to the latter, which is this. That if we wanted if humanity wanted to maintain the current level of affluence known in the upper echelons of like say the United States. There could be anywhere from uh, 500 million to a billion people on the planet. And so, you know, these powerful figures in world politics and government, like, what agenda do you think they're going to go with with their own, you know, findings of their own study that they commissioned? And so it becomes rather apparent that there's a depopulation, you know, push in subtle and, uh, you know... You think it's subtle? <laughs> it's subtle. Com for those, who, are for looking those who are walking yeah. around oh, like this, right. <laughs> subtle, I don't like the majority of yeah. yeah. subtle and other people, yeah. but you know, the majority of the masses still, it seems, yeah, it's pretty subtle because, oh, GMOs are safe. And the anybody WHO about, um, in the UN told me they're safe. Well, <laughs> and if other countries are banning them, that's enough of a reason for me to think that sure. they aren't safe. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard happening. China, is it true? China won't let. GMO foods in their. Uh, I, I heard some of that too. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, know. some of the some of the nations that we provide we that the U.S. has provided bread. aid has provided aid to have declined the the, the product. That, yeah. Good for them. This, sorry. Uh, after you. Uh, well, I was just gonna say that um, 
I heard, you know, in part of that agenda, like, uh, there'd be, you know, these foods given to starving uh, peoples of the world that would be genetically modified to be nutrition deficient, where they would just end up dying. And it was interesting, because I heard that, like, back in 2009 or something, and I saw a news report on something, my, some news program my dad was watching the other night, uh, like maybe six months ago, and it was talking about how, oh, despite, you know, massive efforts to get uh, food to starving people of the world, massive amounts of people are still dying. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure I heard something about this pre game, you know? Like, oh, wait a second here. Something fishy is going on. There was a, um, sorry. There was a uh, thing with the Sioux, there's a documentary on YouTube with the Sioux Nation. I think it was Sioux Nation. They were being, uh, giving government subsidies and instead of helping them, which is what I think they thought it was going to do, the government, they actually destroyed them. They all mm -hmm. became complacent and became dependent. And it just, they just became lazy, basically. I mean, just in simple, th or simple, um, simple way of putting it. Also, there's an old Roman um, saying that goes back a couple thousand years. Bread and like, circuses? Well, <laughs> are you going along that lines? Or what? Bread and circuses? Uh, I don't think they were around Roman <laughs> times 2,000 years ago. But it's uh, something that goes, uh, that which nurtures me, kills me. And if you think about it, the government, where they're giving you free stuff for free, that's like the, that's what happens to the Romans. They they started giving away stuff like free like money and, and things. Oh yeah, bread and circuses. Or, yeah. uh, oh, okay, that is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought he was, was kidding. So if you so uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. So um, the concept was like if you give them something for free, they become complacent. Oh, it's when the Romans learned that they can vote for a living instead of work for one. Oh. Is when Rome started to fall. <laughs> and if you look at the Persian Empire, which was I mean by far. Like the big, I mean, it was an English empire of today. It was like, it was a big kind of honcho. Uh -huh. It was the America of today. And it, it was like huge by, by, by its time. It fell down, their Sasanian uh, dynasty. And that's when they were starting to give out welfare. They, turned, they were starting to turn into a welfare state. And we got money for free. And this is <coughs> all that happened. It fell apart. Um, uh, yeah, no, the, Thomas Sowell wrote uh, an empirical study on of affirmative action, I think. And he looks mostly at the black population, but from that book, I remember thinking, like, yeah, the American Indian population is the longest recipient of affirmative action programs that date back to, you know, long before uh, other minorities started receiving it. And you look, go on reservations today, we're only a few miles away from one, and you can just see a decimated, soul-murdered populace for the most part. You know? Soul-murdered yeah. in their culture, for the, like, by and large, is, you know, like you said, decimated. It was part of their plan. Right. I, I don't think it was part of their It wasn't just that. It, was just it destroyed they met well. like, the oh, culture. Okay, well, and I don't, I know, I'm not saying know, that's solely it, but yeah, certainly. It's I mean, part of their powerful culture. It's definitely a huge contributing right. factor. Right. There was a, there was a campaign to, to, de, to make the Native American look as if they were savage because they actually had large cities and changed. They changed the landscape. They had waterways that they created, canal systems. Yeah. Cities of 30 to 40,000, um, wow. maybe more. Um, they weren't just running around in teepees. And, and but yeah, the Europeans talk. Yeah. The, and so the, there was the Thomas the Jefferson campaign. It was a campaign Thomas Jefferson, uh, you know, uh, was he, part of. He lived of. with him for a while. D did he? Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly uh, which tribe it was, but no, he lived with him for a uh, month, month and a couple months, may have been. So the question therein lies, what if? Oh, well, you know... See, I'm, well, I'm okay. So my, my where my brain is going, we're, we're talking about ge genetically modifying this and gene genetically modifying this. So you have an android, right? So you know, along the lines, I mean, oh, ro God. robots, <laughs> right? You know, but so if it's a robot with biological parts, then it's an android. And what if these parts aren't exactly no, what you're cyborg. Cyborg. Thank you. Android is no, 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 no. Cyborg is a human. It's a human. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Parts. No, android. Is a android. Uh, so I android right. is okay. just an androgynous robot. Robot. I like that. Damn it. Um, <laughs> so, um, so you've got your... your uh, Androgynous. Uh, hold on, guys. Cyborg. We're out of time. Cyborg. Uh, Robot sex. Robot sex. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Finn. We'll, we'll try to get to it soon. Oh, good night. Finn and very soon. <laughs>